What's good, you YouTube? It's Mirror Boy Squiddy back again with another one of them videos. Today, let's talk about how to beat Super Heavy Samurai. This is one of the most craziest combo decks that has come out in a while. They're able to go full board with a bunch of negates off basically just one card and a discard. And the deck has a lot of resilience. They have Super Hammer Soul Piercer, which is not once per turn. It's basically a Sangin effect, which fuels their combos. So today, let's take a look at the cards that can stop them from playing. Starting off, first and foremost, the Hand Traps, Drone Lockbird. We already know that this card's very powerful. You can obviously drop it on the first search that they have, but generally I don't recommend doing this because of the existence of Cyframe Gear Gamma, which a lot of decks, including Samurai, are playing. So if you're gonna drone Lockbird, something like a Super Heavy Samurai motorbike activation when they search something and they don't have any monsters on board, chances are you could get punished with a Cyframe Gear Gamma, which negates your drone Lockbird and also puts two bodies on them to make a Easy synchro, so they could go into something like the Stardust Accelerator uh, very, very easily just there because it's so generic. So I don't really like rolling or in fact using any hand trap when they don't have any monsters, unless your hand is just so bad and you literally only have the draw and Lockbird and you're like, okay, I can't wait for them to commit to the table a monster before activating the draw because I'm gonna lose anyways. My hand's just so awful that I have to draw and pray that they don't have the Cypher Gear Gamma, which is understandable. But if your hand is half decent and you have some engine, maybe some other non-engine as well, I could definitely see an argument for holding this until they actually summon the Wakaushi. So for example, if they start off with the, the bike or if they start off with Wakaushi, uh, they go bike, search Wakaushi, and then they you say that's okay. They pendulum the Wakaushi, it comes out, and then they scale the big monk Benkei. Then maybe after they search something off of the monk, you can draw there because they already have the Wakaushi on the table, so you don't really care about Gamma anymore. That's just one thing uh, I could definitely recommend doing uh, with Drone Lockbird. But again, this is one of the cards that actually has a blanket effect, so it's very powerful against their deck. If you guys aren't main decking this in this format, I would definitely recommend that you do so. Moving on, another highly effective hand trap is actually Ghost Stoker and Snow Rabbit. But this is a bit of a farce, I find, with this card, because again, we run into the issue with Cyframe Gear Gamma. The best point of interaction with the Ghost Stoker is actually the Wakushi, obviously, because it activates on the table as a continuous spell pendulum monster. Uh, pendulum spell rather and if you go circle there obviously it stops them but if they have the gamma you get super mega punished again so there's not really a good point to really use this card it's one of those hand traps that if you are going to be playing around gamma it does definitely has to be paired with something else again if it's the only hand trap in your hand and your hand is bad okay then i could see an argument for ghost or the wakaushi but personally i would rather hold it for a better moment especially my hands half decent one of the cards that you could actually ogre is super every samurai scarecrow because this is a link monster that has to special summon back the target to the link arrow that it points to. So if you get rid of it off of the table, then it's not going to be able to special summon back to that link arrow that it points to. Uh, another thing you could ogre is the Big Monk Benkei. It's a little worse because they do get the Wakaushi onto the table, so you're essentially going neg one with Ghost Ogre. But again, it just guarantees that you're not going to get gamma and just get blown out and lose on the spot. Another card that you should definitely be ogring is Super Heavy Samurai Wagon. If their hand is really bad and the first action they go is summon super heavy wagon as the normal summon, tilt it to defense, and then they use the effect to try and change it back to attack to search, you can go stoker that and then that half of the time it just ends their turn because their hand's so bad they're committing the wagon as their normal summon instead of playing the Bakaoshi or normal summoning the soul piercer which is like the traditional technique that guarantees a maximum advantage for them, right? So just be very careful, be mindful of side frame your gamma for any cards and that does include Ash as well. Let's talk about Ash Blossom. Obviously you can Ash things like motorbike, you can ash um, any card that really searches the soul piercer, but gamma still exists, so just tread carefully. One thing that you could actually ash is the monk big benke and just hope they don't have any follow up. Uh, if their hand is like suboptimal and they go normal summon the soul piercer and then link off and then uh, try to trigger the soul piercer in the graveyard, that's definitely another way you can ash as well. But again, Gamma, just be mindful of it. I like to, that's why I really like Gamma as well. It's a defense against itself. So if you have Gamma in any one of these hand traps and you can just like draw on the resolution, you don't really care about playing around Gamma. Cause if they have a Gamma, you have a Gamma of your own that you can punish their Gamma with your Gamma. So it kind of trades out. That's why I really like the card. And this is a card that you guys should definitely be playing. I think in your uh, 60 card deck between the side deck and the main deck in this format, because it's so good. 
right now, or the 55 cards rather. Uh, being able to get two bodies on board, being able to stop a lot of things that are prevalent in the metagame, even the hand traps that we currently talked about, like Drone Lockbird, uh, Ghost Ogre, and Ash Blossom, all of which Super Heavy Samurai do actually play because it's a monster mash deck. So they're going to be playing a lot of hand traps as defensive options as well. So you being able to gamma against their hand traps as well as uh, their monster engine is very, very powerful. So I do love this card. Guys, if you don't have this card, definitely pick it up already. It's really, really powerful in this format. If you're playing a deck like Flounderies or Kashira, definitely side shifter against this deck because it stops basically all their plays, right? Like they're trying to loop the super heavy samurai soul pierce in their graveyard and only gets the effect when it's in the grave. So being able to shifter them just cuts this out of the equation completely. So their boards are going to be very, very suboptimal. In fact, most of the time, I think they're just going to make a Baguska and pass and then just wait for the shifter, the effects to wear off in the following turn. So shifter is very, very powerful. And I definitely think that this card needs to be banned because it's just way too OP, but that's uh, another story for another time. So if you guys are playing a deck that doesn't rely on the graveyard, then definitely take advantage of Shifter. Nibiru is also decent against this deck. It's not like a blowout by any means because often they just get the Baron on the table, but it depends on what their line is. If they're going the Wakaoshi line and they're actually linking in the Super Heavy Samurai Scarecrow first, then that's actually going to be uh, Baron uh, after five summons. So what's going to happen is you're going to have Motorbike in the graveyard and then they're going to use Wakaoshi as well as the Soul Piercer to summon the XL Stardust Synchro. And then they're going to use that to bring back the Motorbike. So right there, you can actually Nibiru. So they're going to have a board of XL Stardust, the Motorbike, and probably the Scarecrow. So if you nib here, that's fine. Um, it sort of makes their plays a little weaker. Unfortunately, they do get to scale the uh, Wakashi because it was used for a synchro summon and then they can scale again the, with a big bank hit they can still pendulum and continue to play but this way you're making the board a lot less uh, susceptible you're probably preventing a baron from coming out uh, you're preventing like at least one negate so you're getting value out of the nibiru their hand if it's good they can sometimes make the baron on the fifth summon however so they just do the scareclaw uh, scarecrow place after they make the baron so in that case I would still recommend uh, definitely using it before they're able to get out Appaloosa because the Appaloosa negate obviously is intrinsic. They have two or three counters on it. So it just makes your Nibiru a lot worse when you're trading for one counter as opposed to a hard Omni negate. So just be mindful guys, when they get to the point where they're about to make Appaloosa, make sure that you do drop the Nibiru and force out that Baron negate just to trade that one for one. Because again, the Omni negate is what scares us. Appaloosa, it's like a soft negate. They get multiple counters. They can use it more than once per turn. We want to sync our cards and get value out of like the actual hard Omni negates that are actually negating all of our effects. So definitely just trade in the Nibiru as a one for one against a Baron. And then on your turn, use your powerful board breakers to try and push through the board without the Baron negate being in play. And then let's talk about Infinite Impermanence, Effect Veiler and Ghost Mourner. So these cards are not the best against this deck. It depends again on how they open, but generally the choke point is again the super heavy samurai scarecrow because they're trying to resurrect the soul piercer and go continuous into their plays and also go into the synchro level eight so if you have a way to imperm effect veiler or ghost mourner this it's definitely sometimes very highly effective depending on their hand this deck does brick by the way guys they play a lot of hand traps so they're not going to have like all gas it's not the type of combo deck that we're traditionally used to where they have a bunch of all gas but this has a lot of hand traps, so they do brick on certain hands with like four hand traps and a Wakoshi. So if you're imperming the Scarecrow, sometimes it just ends their turn. If they're opening bad and they're normally summoning Super Heavy Samurai Wagon, I would definitely imperm Baylor or Ghost Mourner this as well, so they don't get access to their Super Heavy Samurai engine, they don't get access to the Soap Piercer and then the Wakoshi, right? And since it's such a choke point on the Super Heavy Samurai Scarecrow, Diddy Crow and Ghost Mourner are ghost bell rather are not awful against the deck right if you're playing like a beast warrior deck or for whatever reason your main deck can go spell this format it's definitely not the worst card it's decently good against purely against their my friend purely when they try to resurrect it uh when they try to add back three spell cards and it's uh decently good against the super heavy samurai scarecrow when they try to resurrect like the soul piercer so it's not like the worst card in the world you're still gonna get some value would i side this as our first option definitely not but again, like they're still live, so there's some leeway there just to give you guys some context, some lore on that. One other card that I haven't really experimented with, but it could be decently good, is No Material. 
This is an older hand trap that people kind of used, I think, in the Goki format. What it does is if your opponent special summons a monster where you control no cards, you can discard it, target one face-up monster your opponent controls. This turn, that monster cannot be used as a tribute fodder, as a material for fusion, synchro, XYZ, or link. So it effectively just locks that monster in place and they can't use it for any of their plays. It's unfortunately a hard once per turn, so if you draw multiples, you cannot use it, much like the Ghost Sisters. However, it's decently good when they go normal summon the Soul Piercer at any point in their combo, because it could cause them to pass their turn if they don't have access to another Soul Piercer. This Soul Piercer is not going to be able to go to the graveyard via the traditional lines of linking or synchroing, or even XYZing. It's going to be chilling there on the table. So that's one thing to uh, keep note of. However, if they have other ways to continue extending, continue playing, then they could just make something like a Baron de Fleur, pop their own Soul Piercer that was targeted by the No Material and continue playing. So to that extent, it's not as good as it possibly could be. Also, the drawback where you have to control no cards means that it's only live effectively on turn one or turn two. It's a lot like D-Shifter where you can't have cards in a certain place. So just be aware of that. If you draw this like mid game, it's not gonna be as good. But again, it's just like a cute idea. I think you guys should experiment with, see how good this card is. Is see if it stops them in their tracks it's potentially something that's definitely viable and can catch them off guard let's talk a little bit about some board breakers so dark ruler no more uh and to an extent i guess also curry card div incarnate these are cards that are decently good going second because you're able to bounce uh you're able to bait out all of their effects or in dark ruler's case just activate it as a blanket immediately i don't like these cards Unfortunately, because when Super Heavy Samurai full combos, they're gonna end with like four cards in hand because they're gonna get it add off into your box. They're gonna be able to draw two cards off of the Tunneler. So it's like, okay, you Dark Ruler, they're gonna have a hand potentially full of hand traps as well to stop you. You have to break their board and then you have to also mount enough negates. So on the following turn, you don't get punished because they also have their pendulum scale as well. They have the Wak Wakoshi, the monk, which they can search again. They can do their full combo again, right? So just, I don't like these cards on their own. They're definitely better when paired with other options. But personally, I feel like hand traps are a lot safer way to go right now because you're just guaranteed to stop your opponent from getting to that point. So then that way you're able to push through the board as opposed to trying to break their board, which is very volatile right now. They're going to have, essentially they use one card to make that full board of negates and they have hand traps in their hand. You have to kill the board and then you have to pray that you can get your plays through. And then you have to, on top of all of that, make sure your opponent doesn't come back on the following turn. So it's just kind of not my first choice personally. Some cards that are decent going first, Deck Lockdown, this is a card that we kind of talked about in the past couple of videos. I, I think I still kind of like this card. It says neither player can add cards from their deck to their hand except by drawing them and the monsters cannot be special summoned from the main deck. It destroys itself after the second standby phase, but generally you heal so fast that you don't really care anymore. So against Super Heavy Samurai, it's a mistake. They can't use any of their effects. They cannot uh, search, which is first and foremost, like one of the big things that they, that they do. And then the other thing that's kind of cute is it stops certain cards that are in... Uh, their deck as well. Cards like uh, the Super Heavy Samurai uh, Soul Peacemaker, which actually does special summon from the deck, so it turns that off as well. They're not able to tap into certain cards that they might want to in order to fix their levels, in order to make something like a Baguska. So it's kind of nice. And it also stops the Purely deck as well. It stops all their special summons and they're adding, so it has some crossover there. It has some marginal utility, so I think this could be a decent card going first as a side deck option against them. Cosmic Cyclone is another generic one. I really like one-for-one -one cards against Wakaoshi because that card just enables them to do all their plays. It's a starter, it's an extender, and it enables everything off just one card, right? So if you're able to Cosmic Cyclone it, it doesn't stop all of their plays. They're still going to be able to play if they have a lot of extenders. However, it does a lot for the deck. So when Cosmic Cyclone is paired with like one negate or two negates of their hand traps, it could potentially stop them in their tracks. So I really, really like that as an option. Perform Pal 5 Rainbow Magician is a card that a lot of YouTubers and people in the community have been hyping up. Uh, effectively, you put it as a pendulum scale, and then it has the effect where if they control zero spells or traps in the spell and trap zones, their monsters cannot attack or activate the effects. And then um, it's essentially a mystic mine against the Super Heavy Samurai deck. However, a lot of Super Heavy Samurai players have already caught on and adapted. They are all siding Arch Phoenix Centric in their side deck to pop this card because it's treated as a spell or trap um, and they can pop it when it put in their pendulum zone. And some players are also playing Prohibition. So what they can actually do is they can set Prohibition and then because they don't control zero spell or trap uh, in their tra spell or trap column, they can actually start using their monster effects again. It turns off the Rainbow Magician. And also some players are side decking the um, 
Magical Hound as well. This is a card that's searchable off of Ancient Gear Box. So it's really useful, especially when going first and people are siding Rainbow Magician as a Mystic Mind going second. They already have Magical Hound, which activates in the hand or the graveyard. And unfortunately, Form of Power, five Rainbow Magician only stops effects that are on the field that they control. So um, you can still use the Hound effect to bounce the Form of Power Rainbow Magician. It's an out. So I don't like this card as much. I think it's a little overhyped personally. I think there are a lot better options, things like Deck Lockdown that actually do the job. Obviously, Deck Lockdown is also sub uh, it's also a weak to the Archfiend Eccentric, so you just have to adapt. Generally, having like an on in the gate with your Deck Lockdown, uh, I find this the best option there. Now, the card that people haven't really been talking about is Deck Devastation Virus. Okay, guys, like Super Heavy Samurai, a lot of their attacks are under 1500. So being able to use the deck Devastation Virus effectively wipes out all of their hand. And because your deck's all monsters, it's like there's almost no way they can dodge this. And on top of everything, they play a lot of hand traps. All the hand traps have sub 1500 attack, so those get blown out as well. You could potentially deck dev someone for five. So if you're going first against Super Heavy Samurai, this could be an option if you're playing a deck like Branded, right? Just tribute one Dark Monster with 2000 or more attack. You could even play... Um, the Link monster that allows you to uh, special summon itself is a 2300, right? This is a generic Coldbreaker Virus Swordsman, two effect monsters, 2300 attack. It's really easy. All you need is two monsters on the board, make this, and then you have a target for the deck dev, which effectively is a blowout card and could just win you the game on the spot as long as you're playing around their hand traps in order to get to this line. So that's just something to consider, deck devastation virus. Personally, I think this is definitely a card that you guys should experiment. I'm definitely gonna test this out um, in certain decks. And I think in Branded, uh, if there's a way to get the monster out really easily, even after you get Ashed, which I think is quite easy with Cartesia and other cards, then this could be a very, very good option against Super Heavy Samurai. So that, that's all I've had up, uh, for this video. If I've missed anything, guys, definitely let me know in the comments below. And if you haven't already, subscribe and leave a like. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.